Well, I just want you to know the most important thing is that everything I'm going to be telling you today is based on years of research with over hundreds of women and couples. Because when something bothers me that I can't explain very well to myself, then there's no way I can possibly explain it or help my clients. So when I don't understand something, I do research. So I researched over a thousand couples. And everything I'm going to be saying today will be the top points that I want you to kind of put in your head and take home with you. And I use props because I learned the hard way. How many of you have also learned the hard way, right? <laughs> that when I first started doing these workshops, I noticed that people were sitting there with their arms crossed over their head, um, and every time they would ask a question, they'd raise it, their hand and start with, yes, but, I go, oh, okay, I'm not getting through to them. And then at about 3.20 in the morning, I woke up with one of those brainstorms, and I learned that most of us, when we have brainstorms, usually occurs at approximately the same time. So it's sort of like your signature. So pay attention to that. Mine is 3.20 in the morning. So I bolted up out of bed and I said out loud to the room, I have to bypass their verbal dis defensiveness and I'm going to use visual cues. And I, I have to tell you, that was a game changer for me. So I'm going to be using these cues and I, I hope they help you remember them because they will serve as reminders when you are dating or mating. So, the number one mistake that emerged from my research, which included workshops, lectures, surveys, um, focus groups, the number one mistake that I would never have predicted, and it's very wise, you know your research is on target when the researcher, him or herself, is surprised. Because the danger is finding what you're looking for, right? That would be a bad sign of research. So I learn along with all of you. So the number one mistake, keep in your mind what you think it might be after a bad love experience, you say to yourself, no more love. Down on love. No more guys, no more women. I'm, I'm retiring from life and I'm going to move in with my friends on a farm or have lots of cats and we're just going to, we're going to move on now and that's it, I am done. But let me tell you why that is such a really, really bad idea. You get trapped into magical thinking that the universe is going to tilt towards you and bring you the one. Now think about that. The universe is really going to get, you know, sort of like tilt on its axis and roll someone towards you. No, it's really not going to happen. And just think, isn't there likely more than the one? There are lots of the ones out there. And once you take yourself out of the socializing, meeting people world, you get rusty at reading people. You don't get used to it. So yes, to answer a question that's probably going through your head, gee, aren't I supposed to take time off and kind of learn what happened to me? Absolutely. But there's a little disclaimer. Time is not the measure of whether you've learned anything. You can spend years and still be stuck. So what you need to pay attention to is why did I choose this person and fall in love at the time of my life when I did? If you read the program here, you know I'm going to be talking about love patterns, but I'm also talking about intuition. Intuition tips are to do that exploring and ask yourself, why in the world did I choose this person at that time? That's your intuitive cue to pay attention to what's happening in your life. For example, I had a client who was 39 years old, 
a female, and she wanted to get married and have children because her biological clock was really making some noise. And so what happened? She chose a, no, I wouldn't say chose. She grabbed, lassoed the next okay enough partner. So pay attention to what's going on in your life. Were you ill? Did you have a loss? Because that will affect your emotional state. And it will wreak habit, havoc on your intuition being accurate. Doesn't that make sense? So know when you're in danger. And yes, take time to learn about yourself, but don't fool yourself into thinking that time is the measure. So finally, you're ready for love again, okay? And the next trap you get into is you think you're going to get that rose, you know, on The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. And, I mean, does that show ever really end up in very many matches that last? Some, but compared to how many men or women they kind of go through, it's not very good. So, again, just to make a point, your intuition tells you hopefully, that there isn't one person in this world to give a rose to. How could that be? I, I would never, ever have met my husband if he were not, okay, you're going to frown and wrinkle your face on this. I married my boss. But there was no, no hanky-panky or anything. We were just strictly colleagues, and I was on the administrative staff. The point I'm making is... I would never have met my husband if I didn't get hired to be one of the clinical directors. Never. So does that mean I never ever would have found love and met someone else? That's ridiculous. So don't get trapped into that idea that there's one rose to give out there. That would really be foolish. But why would you get stuck into that kind of thinking? Because underneath it all, you're really afraid to take that chance. Really afraid to take a chance on love. So you structure all these belief systems in your head that say, I want to look for the one. I'm going to wait for chemistry to come. Well, the good news and bad news, depending upon how you look at it, is that chemistry is not the litmus test to use to determine whether someone's good for you. Sometimes chemistry takes time. And it's also true that your intuition could be strong because you're desperate or lonely or like a lot of the people in my study were the only person in their family who was single. Of all the first and second cousins, and they said to themselves, that's it. So be aware of your mindset when you go out on dates because that feeling of chemistry will get a boost by your current situation and you'll have your intuition be strong, but wrong. Be careful. Intuition is not the test as to whether something's the right thing to do, unless your field emotionally is cleared. So now let's say you've gone a long time without dating, without finding love, and you meet someone who is very, very exciting. <laughs> very, very exciting. You know, if, if you're looking for a guy and you want that, wow, that sense of authority and power. And if I had my lioness, I couldn't bring all my props with me. So imagine I have a lioness. And if you don't know about lioness, they do all the major hunting. Not the male. Ha ha. Right? <laughs> so, you find someone a lion or a lioness who's exciting or beautiful or very rich or very prominent. And you just say to yourself, wow, we, I, I, I hit the jackpot. And you've ignored all the other kinds of signs. You've turned your intuition off because you don't want anything to contradict that this catch that you got. Because you're thinking inside your head, I got a date with this person. This person chose me, and that will jam up your intuition again. So you go through and you ignore all those signs, such as ordering everything for you, 
telling you what to do and, and, and teaching you endlessly how much he or she knows about fashion or, or jewelry or wine or what restaurant to go to. Be very wary of someone who has to show off to you. And you've seen them before show off. They would have preached to you how much they know about what to order, what to do, and in the middle of going to a play or an intermission, they're going to give you a rundown that they could have found on the internet. <laughs> so, be careful, because what often happens is that exciting person morphs into a little piglet. Someone who's not very good for you. Someone who needs endless admiration, adoration, and control. That is something you need to pay attention to. So when someone takes you on a date to a fancy restaurant and says, uh, these, these are the dishes that are good for you to order, don't get trapped into thinking, oh gosh, I better go listen to what they're saying. I've got to please this person. You, you book that trend. You do what you want because you want to be, more than anything else, your real you. Because why would you not? In fact, I just gave a TED talk, as, as Lutia just said, and in that talk I mentioned that it's very important to put a real foot forward on your date. Don't do what most people do, put on their best self. The reason you want to show a real self is that you want to get a real reaction about a real aspect of you. So if you're a fussy orderer or indecisive or don't want to take your date's advice as this is the you know, dish of the house, be you. Very, very important. Because you don't want to end up being surprised. So now let's say you notice your date turns out to be a controlling, domineering, needing lots of applause all the time time kind of person who takes charge of you, the next dangerous sign is that you overcorrect your error. And this is what that looks like. You say to yourself, no more controlling people. I'm going to get someone really sweet, really, really sweet and easygoing. And once again, I, I should add to you, there's nothing wrong with people who are knowledgeable. And there's nothing wrong with someone being sweet. But what you have to watch out for is whether if you're very easy to fall into trap of overcorrecting and doing that love flip, this charming, sweet, very sweet little person can turn out to be... Hang in there. Someone who can't make a decision... <laughs> A, 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 avoids conflict, a, um, you know, backs away from, you know, taking a lead. You know, when you choose a partner, well, one of the things you need to pay attention to is your goal here is to find a wing person, someone who can step in when you can't step in. When you need to step out, you want someone else to be there who can step in for you. And this sweet little adorable little turtle just ain't going to make it for you. So that's how you get trapped in those love flips. So pay attention to those extremes. Very telling. And what often happens to that sweet little puppy before they turn into that turtle, you get a warning sign. And your warning sign is often you begin to feel suffocating because this person needs more attention, more affection, more confirmation, more affirmation from you. And pretty soon you feel like the air in the relationship has just phew, gone out of the room. These are the signs that help you trust your intuition. So keep in mind love flips, pay attention to those patterns, and make sure you can pay attention to your excitement level because that can get you into trouble. It will jam up your intuition. And I'm sorry to tell you, not really sorry, but you really do have to date a lot of frogs, right? You just absolutely have to do. And your goal is to go on as many dates as possible. And here are some of the things that the men and women did in my group. We're going to put you right there, Froggy. Okay. 
So, I was raised by a woman named Daisy. She lived in the house, and she was so wise. And she taught me lots of life lessons. And she taught me, never volunteer to close a door. Now, how does that apply to dating? If someone says, I have someone I'd like to fix you up with, you say what? Yeah, sure. Yes, sure. Thank you. You never know. You never know. And, and what if you don't like the person right away? Please go out on another date. What's the goal of dating? Not, wait a second, you know the answer to this one. It's not to find the one. Okay? It is not to find the one. Your goal of dating is to test your intuitive assessment of your sense of who that person is. Learn how to read them, which is a whole other talk. So I want you to pay attention to what you observe and at the middle of the date or at the end of the date, excuse yourself, go to the restroom and say to yourself, what am I feeling? What were my first impressions? What are my thoughts about this person? And put them in your mind, keep a little list, and go out with that person again. The goal is to build trust and confidence so you don't get trapped in all these things I've been showing you. That's how you find love, that you trust your ability to let down your guard and let love in. Thank you.